In this video, we will solve exercises on the present value and future value of money in the case of uneven cash flows and non-annual compounding. We will use the scientific calculator to solve problems of uneven cash flows and non-annual compounding, and we will also use the financial calculator to solve the same. So let's get started. Let us look at exercise 1. It says, John has just purchased some equipment for his gym. He plans to pay the following amounts at the end of each year for the next five years, 8,250, 8,500, 8,750, 9,000, and 10,500. If he uses a discount trade of 10%, what is the cost of the equipment today? If you notice in this example, they are asking us of the cost of the equipment today, so we are trying to solve for the present value. However, we cannot use the present value of annuity since the amounts we have here are not the same. So we have a cash flow and not a payment. In this way, we will have to use the present value for each of these cash flows separately and then find the summation. But in order not to get confused with the number of time periods for each of these payments, let's try to put them in a timeline. So the first payment is 8,250. When we try to take it back to the present time, that's a one time, that's a one period of time. And then for the second payment, 8,500, taking it to the present time is taking it back two periods of time. For the 8,750, we're taking it back to the present value, that's a three periods of time, and so on for the rest of the payments. Now we know that the discount rate is 10%. So we will use the present value equation and simply plug in the numbers and then find the summation of these numbers, which is 33,765.593. And this is our answer for this equation. Now you might want to take the answer of each cash flow separately and then find the summation, or you might want to do it as I did, put them all together and get the summation. Now let's look at another exercise. It says, if your company just sold a product for the following payment plan, $50,000 today, $25,000 next year, and $10,000 the following year. If your firm places the payments into an account earning 10% per year, how much money will be in the account after collecting the last payment? So if you notice in this example, we are solving for the future value of money. However, again, we cannot use the future value of annuity equation because the payments are of different amounts. So we will have to find each one separately using the future value equation and then get the summation. Now, all of these amounts are put in an account that pays 10%. Now, the only thing is each one has a different number of time periods. To simplify it, we can put it in a timeline. So at T0, we have $50,000 because this is the amount we are investing today. At T1, which is after one year, we have the $25,000 because this is the amount we're depositing the next year. And then T2 is the $10,000. This is the amount we are investing in the next year or the year after. So the $50,000 will remain in this uh, account for two periods of time and we will earn on it the 10%. As for the 25,000, it will remain in the account for one year and we will earn the 10% on it. However, for the 10,000, which is the last payment we will be receiving, it will not stay in the account because we will be withdrawing all the amount, so we will not be earning anything on it. So let's use the future value equation, as you can see it, plug in the numbers. As you notice, the, the 50,000 will be raised to the power of 2, that's the 2 times period, and the 25,000 to 1 time period, and the 10,000 to 0 time period because it will not stay in the account. We can either find the answer altogether or um, find each one separately and then get the summation, and the answer will be $98,000 which is the future value of the amounts we will be receiving throughout time. 
Now the second part of this video is about the non-annual compounding. We are here referring to the interest rate. If the interest rate is compounded more than one time a year, we say this is a case of non-annual compounding. It's very easy solving it. So let's look at exercise one. It says, suppose you invested $9,000 today in a saving account that pays you 14% interest compounded semi-annually. How much will you have in 25 years? So this is a simple case of a future value exercise, except that the interest rate is compounded semi-annually. And semi-annually, we mean two times a year. So what we should do first is adjust the interest rate. So we will change it from an um, annual percentage rate, which is the regular rate, into something we call effective annual rate using this equation. So we have the EAR, the effective annual rate, the APR, the annual percentage rate, and M is the number of compounding period. How often is this interest rate compounded? So we will plug in the numbers. The APR as given in the exercise is 14%, so it's 0 0.14. And then M, the number of compounding is 2 because it's compounded semi-annually, which means two times a year. Now solving for this, it will give us the effective annual rate as 0.1449, which is 14.49. And now we can carry on with the exercise by solving it using the future value equation, plug in the number as usual. So the present value is given already at 9,000, and the interest rate, we will use the one we found using the equation. So it's 0.1449, and the number of time periods is already given at 25 years. Plug in all the numbers in the calculator, we will get the future value, which is 265,113.226. Now let's look at another exercise of non-annual compounding. You might want to pause the video, try to solve it on your own using the effective annual rate uh, equation, and then come back and check your answer. So exercise two says, suppose you deposited $1,000 in an account that pays 9.6% interest compounded monthly. How long will it take for the amount to grow to 5,000? So here we have an interest rate that is compounded monthly. We will use the effective annual rate uh, equation and plug in the numbers. Monthly means 12 times a year. So I will divide the annual percentage rate by 12. And I will get the answer. The effective annual rate will be 10.03% or 0 0.1003. And now I will use the regular future value equation, plug in the numbers. Um, the future value is 5,000 because this is the amount in the future. And then 1,000 is what we deposited today, the present value. And then the I, the interest rate, is the effective annual rate raised to the power of N. But I don't have N, it's the missing value because it says how long will it take for the amount to grow. So before we find n, we should simplify the equation. We will take the 1000 to the left side of the equation by dividing it, and we will get the answer. Now I'm left with two sides of the equation. However, still n is an exponent. To lower the exponent, we can use the natural log. In your calculator, follow, follow my steps. So I will press ln and 5, and I will get the answer which is 1.6094 and write it down. And then again, I will press LN 1.1003 and I will get the answer, which is 0 0.09558. And I will write N on the same line. Now it's easy to solve this problem. I can take the numbers to the left side and keep the missing value on the right side. So I will take the 0 0.09558 to the left side of the equation by dividing it, and I will get the answer, which is 16.838, which is the number of years. I can round it to 17 years. 
The third and last part of this video is about using the financial calculator to solve these problems. So let's look at exercise one once again. This is about an uneven cash flow. We have the cash flows, we have the discount rate, we are trying to solve for the present value, but we don't have the number of time periods because each cash flow takes place at a different time. So using a timeline makes it very easy for us. Let's put the timeline and put the payments. And what we're trying to do is find the present value. The first payment took place one year from now at T1. This is our 8,250. This is a future value. So enter it in your calculator, future value 8,250. And then the number of time periods. It takes us one period of time to go back to T0, which is now. So the number of time periods is 1. Interest rate is already given, 10%. Try to solve for the present value, PV, and it will give us 7,500. Now the second payment is the 8,500. This is our future value. Again, I is 10%, and we are trying to solve for the present value. But what is the number of time periods? As you can see, it takes us two periods of time to move from T2 to T0. So the number of time periods is 2. And the answer we will try to solve for the present value, which is 7,024.79. And I will do the same for the next payment and the next and so on. And I will get the values and write them down. And then I will get the summation of all these present values and it will be the answer of this exercise, which is 33,765.58. Moving to the next exercise, here we are trying to solve for the future value. We, ha we have the present values given at different time periods, so we will put them in the timeline. So at T0, which is today, we have the $50,000. And at T1, we have the 25,000. And at T2, we have the 10,000. If you notice the 50,000, to move it from T0 today to T2, which is at the end of our deposit, there is a two periods of time. So I will enter it in my calculator. Present value 50,000. Number of time periods, the N is 2. The I, the interest rate, is 10%. And I will solve for the future value, which I will be given at 60500 And then moving to the next payment, the $25,000, I will enter it as a present value. Don't forget to enter it as minus, and the same thing with the 50000 Enter it as minus 25000 and then the number of time periods. It takes me one period of time to move from T1 to T2. So I will enter it as 1, interest rate is 10%, and I will solve for the future value, which is 27500 As for the 10000 I will withdraw the whole amount at the end at T2. So I will not be leaving it for any time in the uh, deposit uh, account. So I will leave it as it is, 10000 And then I will get the summation of all these future values, and it will be... The answer for this exercise, which is $98,000. Now finally, let's look at solving problems of non-annual compounding using the financial calculator. This is way easier than solving them using the scientific calculator. And I will show you how to do this. This is again the same exercise we had earlier. So we have a present value of 9000 put in a saving account that pays 14% interest. However, it is compounded semi-annually, and how much will it be in 25 years? So the number of time periods is 25, and we are trying to solve for the future value. So using your financial calculator, press compound, where you will find N, enter 25, that's the number of time periods as we have it. And then I, the interest rate, keep it 14. We have it in the question at 14%. In the calculator, we will enter it as 14. The present value, as you know, you enter it as a minus figure, so we will enter minus 9,000. And then PMT, this is the payment. We don't have payments, so press 0, because this is a lump sum of money. 
fv, the future value, skip it because this is what we're trying to solve for. And then p slash y, that's the payment per year, keep it at 1 because we only have one payment, which is the lump sum of money. So keep it at 1. And then the c slash y, that's the important key in this uh, exercise. That's the compounding per year. Since we have a semi-annually compounding, so you will keep it at 2. So it is compounded two times a year. And then go all the way to the FV, the future value, and press solve, and it will give you the answer at 265,113.23. Very simple, isn't it? And the last exercise we have here, the same thing. We have a present value of 1,000. Uh, interest rate 9.6% compounded monthly and then how long will it take to grow to 5,000 so I am missing the n and I have the future value of 5,000 so press compound n we will skip it because this is what we're trying to solve for i the interest rate we will enter it as it is 9.6 and then the present value minus 1,000 the payments zero the future value we have it at five thousand payment per year is one because we have a lump sum and then compounding per year is 12 because it's compounded monthly and that is 12 times a year and then go all the way to n and press solve and it will give you the answer which is 16.83 that is 16 years 0.83 thank you very much for watching I hope you found this video very useful and if you have any questions or any requests, please leave them in the comments below.